So this year we said goodbye to the home button with the introduction of three new iPhones at Apple's event at Cupertino. The central stage was taken by two new Apple products, one being the new iPhone XS and R lineup and second being the new Apple uh, Series 4 watch. In this video I'm bringing to you the main highlights from Apple's event so if you want to know more stick around. Immediately in the beginning of this video I want to make it clear that this year's event can be mainly characterized with small hardware updates and spec bumps both on the new iPhone and also on the Apple Watch. So let's first start talking about the new iPhone. In terms of the design not a lot has changed. The new iPhone still rocks the same and familiar design from last year's iPhone X and it again comes in the same combination with stainless steel and glass. Only this time it comes in three colors being gold, silver and also space gray. In terms of the screen the iPhone X will come with a true tone OLED Super Retina display and since they didn't really talk about the screen to body ratio we can again assume that the iPhone will have the same kind of bezels like last year's model. But this year the iPhone X will come in two sizes, one being the 5.8 inch smaller version called the iPhone XS and its bigger brother the 6.5 inch version called the iPhone XS Max. Both of these phones will offer a familiar display experience but this year Apple claims that they achieved a 60% greater dynamic range of, on these screens. Again these screens are going to support True Tone and of course there's again going to be the familiar iPhone notch but this time the notch is going to be packed with an upgraded set of sensors so in the end it should result in better face ID performance but also better security. Again Apple was not really specific here. But the biggest change for this phone actually happened under the hood with the introduction of their new A12 Bionic chip. Throughout the keynote Apple was constantly flexing the muscles of this new chip by demonstrating AR performance and also the machine learning capabilities of this new iPhone. In short Apple claims that with the introduction of the new A12 Bionic chip they achieved a 15% increase in performance, a 40% increase in power efficiency and also a 50% increase on their GPU performance. If you combine all of this together according to Apple you should get 30% faster app opening speeds, better AR performance and also console like gaming experience on the new iPhone. Knowing Apple all of these percentages should be taken with a grain of salt. Ok let's now talk about the second biggest upgrade on this new iPhone being the camera. Both of the iPhone XS and XS Max will come with a dual lens setup where the primary shooter will be a 12 megapixel shooter with an aperture of 1.8 and the secondary lens being a 12 megapixel telephoto lens with a 2.4 aperture. Both of these lenses will be optically stabilized and they will also be uh, supported by a true tone flash. Additionally with this new iPhone they introduced also smart HDR which actually enables you to take bursts of photos without any shutter lag. An additional feature that the new iPhone will offer with the combination of this new camera and also the new chip is the ability to uh, adjust the depth of field of the photos that you take when editing them. This is no revolutionary technology that Apple invented but this year we are going to be able to experience it on the new iPhones. In terms of video uh, there will now be support for wide stereo audio recording and also playback. In terms of storage there will be three options, a 64 GB version, a 256 GB version and a big 512 GB version of the iPhone. Again in line with Apple's tradition there won't be any expandable storage option. In terms of the battery we got a slight battery bump but as always Apple was not really specific here because they didn't talk about the actual battery capacity but what they promised to us this year is that the new iPhone XS will offer 30 minutes more battery life compared to the last year's iPhone X while on the other hand the iPhone XS Max will pack an even bigger battery which should deliver one and a half hour more battery life compared to the last year's iPhone X. And there are also some other things that are worth mentioning. This year the iPhone X lineup will come with IP68 water resistance and an additional thing that's happening for the first time in history of Apple 
is the fact that the new iPhone lineup will now support dual SIM capability. And now comes the less fun part, the price. The iPhone XS starts with a price tag of $999. On the other hand, the bigger brother, the iPhone XS Max, starts with a price tag of $1,099, which goes up to a very uncomfortable price of $1,449 for the 512 gigabyte version. Okay, but let's now focus on what's, in my opinion, one of the biggest highlights of the event, and that's the introduction of the more affordable member of the iPhone X lineup, being the iPhone XR. Why do I say the biggest highlight of the event? It's because the iPhone XR offers you a very compelling package of the latest Apple technology for a much more affordable price compared to its bigger brothers, the iPhone XS and XS Max. The iPhone XR packs a very similar edge-to-edge -edge screen design found by the other two iPhones and it also offers both water and dust resistance. It will come in six colors, white, black, and also the more vibrant versions, yellow, red, blue, and coral. But for this lower $749 price tag, Apple has made some sacrifices here. So in this phone, instead of the OLED screen, you're getting a 6.1 True Tone LCD display that Apple calls Liquid Retina. This screen size puts the phone right in between the 5.8 inch and also the 6.5 inch iPhone XS and XS Max. It offers a very familiar resolution that you can also find by the iPhone 8. And just like the other models, it supports Face ID, it has a true depth sensor and also a tap to wake option. But the really cool part about this phone actually comes under the hood because it has the same kind of A12 Bionic chip found in the other iPhones. So if you combine this lower resolution screen with this chip, this phone should actually be a real powerhouse. An additional sacrifice made here is in the camera department, where the dual lens shooter is replaced with a 12 megapixel single lens shooter with a 1.8 aperture. From a hardware perspective, the camera will be identical to its bigger brothers. It will also offer the same kind of experience with true tone flash, smart HDR, and it will also offer the same bokeh experience with depth control. The same goes also for the front camera. In terms of the battery, again, no specific battery capacity information, but what they promise to us is that it's going to deliver one and a half hour more battery life compared to the iPhone uh, 8 Plus. During the keynote, they also didn't mention anything in terms of wireless charging or fast charging, but I checked the website and the new iPhone XR uh, will support both wireless and fast charging. In terms of the price, it will come with a $749 price tag which again, as I said, is going to be a very compelling package for the majority of people that are planning to upgrade to a new iPhone. As I said in the introduction of this video, the second product that Apple showcased is the new Apple Watch Series 4. By showcasing both the hardware and also software capabilities of this new watch, we see that Apple is now really trying to become an all-around health guardian. With the improved watch sensors, the watch can now detect different heart irregularities. An additional thing that the watch can do now as well is to detect uh, the potential scenario where you fall on the ground. In that case, it enables you to do an SOS call or it sends your location to your emergency contacts. But in essence, it's the same story like for the iPhones. Not a lot has changed here. The screen got slightly bigger. They're also talking about an edge-to-edge -edge design, but from the keynote, we also saw that the screen actually doesn't really stretch edge to edge. Additionally, the chip has improved and they also claim that the speakers are now 50% louder. The battery of the watch again delivers the standard 18 hours of operational time. The price in the end is going to be $399 for the GPS version and $499 for the cellular version. Okay, it's conclusion time. So as I said in the beginning, there's really nothing too much to get excited about this year because as said, it was mostly small incremental updates on the device lineup of Apple. So this is what I can recommend you. If you already own an iPhone 10, there's practically no need to upgrade to these new versions because in essence, you're actually getting the same device that is slightly faster while last year's iPhone 10 was already quite fast. So as said, no need to update. 
On the other hand, if you own an iPhone 7, 8 or 8 Plus, the more compelling option for you might be to upgrade to the iPhone XR, mainly because it offers a familiar screen that you already got used to on the iPhone 8 devices, and next to that, the screen is updated up to the 2018 standards. Additionally, the iPhone XR offers the complete Apple experience by just doing small sacrifices on the screen and also on the camera. Smaller storage capacity on the iPhone XR is not really an argument for me because the majority of the content, both photos, videos and movies, you actually probably by now have on the cloud. The same story can be also applied for the uh, Apple Watch Series 4. If you own an Apple Watch Series 3, there's actually again no need to upgrade. Only maybe if you're suffering from a cardiovascular disease where you could potentially benefit from the newly implemented ECG sensor. But another thing that we witnessed this year is Apple's rude push towards even higher smartphone prices. Why am I saying rude? Because asking $1,449 for a 512 gigabyte version, in my opinion, is just rude. And by the way, in Europe, that price goes up to 1.9K. There is actually nothing in this phone that really justifies the price tag higher of $1,000. And there is nobody who can tell me that this is the way in which the smartphone industry is setting because with price tags over $1,000, we're actually stepping into premium laptop territory. Just think about it. But let me know guys what you think. Do you agree or disagree? Which of these new Apple products are you getting this year? I'm really curious to hear. So let's start the discussion in the comment section below. Okay guys, so this is gonna be it for this video. If you like this video, give it a like. Uh, if you like the content that I'm creating, consider maybe subscribing because I have more content coming up. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.